Hello YouTube, Natural Verities here. Tonight I'm going to talk about my audio project that I have going out in my man loft in my barn. This is a 1,000 square foot barn loft party space. That's part of my house, my property, I should say. A fun place to come and play, especially late at night when the road noise is reduced a lot. There's a road not too far away from here. So I'm going to tell you how I built a system, which doesn't look like much right now, but it will someday, um, that sounds absolutely amazing. It's perhaps in many aspects the best sound I've ever encountered, and I've seen and heard a lot of really excellent, particularly professional level sound systems in my work as a uh, designer of, of musical products. Um, I'm going to tell you how I did this and how I did it on the cheap. Um, Craigslist is your friend. Uh, well, well, we'll get a little closer here now and, and show you what's going on. This is a BNC 18-inch subwoofer, professional cinema quality, cast frame, etc., etc., etc. Fabulous. That's mounted in what used to be a six foot high stereo armoire that ended up not getting used for years and years and years so I cut it down and turned it into a subwoofer enclosure. Um, we won't say any more about that right at the moment. Over here we have kind of the heart of the system. These are Toa 380SE professional PA loudspeakers. They were designed specifically for use with electronic instruments back in the 80s when synthesizers were starting to come into the fore in live performance settings. Um, Christine McVie of Fleetwood Mac, for example, used these as stage monitors for her piano or other keyboards that she played on stage in live settings. Uh, these are made in Japan, designed in Japan, um, kind of designed in Japan. Uh, you see that woofer, it's a 15-inch woofer um, with a curvilinear cone, a massive gasket on the outside that's about close to 16 inches in diameter. That's almost an exact copy of an Altec 15-inch driver. Uh, if I showed you the back side of it, the cast basket uh, it would look even more like an Altec. Um, it was probably very closely copied from an Altec driver. Uh, right above that woofer, is one of the keys to the amazing sound of this system. That's a little ring slot tweeter, uh, very similar to uh, tweeters made by JBL, uh, made famous by JBL in a lot of their studio monitors. And it is one fabulous little unit, Alnico magnet, etc., etc. Um, sounds heavenly. This horn not being used. I was not particularly enamored of the sound of this horn. I, I could probably make it sound quite a bit better with some digital signal processing, and I've already taken some steps in that direction, but I had some other horns. These little guys right here, and not so little. Uh, radial horns, old school, uh, probably not the best dispersion characteristics for hi-fi, but uh, they've got a, in the sweet spot, wow, do they sound sweet. Absolutely sweet. I took those out of. We'll walk into the dark for a minute. These Mitchell PA cabinets from the 70s from a little boutique guitar amp manufacturer in, I believe, Riverside, California. An alumnus of Mesa Boogie started this little company and started making sand-filled guitar amps and uh, apparently branched out into PA enclosures as well. Um, I bought these off of Craigslist, the pair of them, in almost like new black and white Tolex. Beautiful, beautiful condition. Bought these for $100. Uh, back to the Toas again, price-wise. Those were $200 for the pair. That's a lot of drivers for $200, especially given the performance level. Now we'll show you a little more about the sweet horns on top. These have University ID40 Alnico compression drivers. 
Uh, I believe they're phenolic diaphragms. They seem impregnable. I've never found instructions anywhere on the internet how to take them apart without a hacksaw. Uh, maybe I'll figure that out someday. We may have to x-ray them or something. <laughs> In any case, um, there they are. I believe they're 16 ohm drivers. Uh, very efficient as all such compression drivers are. Uh, and very multi-purpose. They were designed for use among other things in you know, fairground situations with uh, big horns uh, running essentially full full range sound and just living with it. Um, so they're pretty rugged. Um, I do have them crossed over and we'll talk about the crossover at this point. How do I make all this stuff sound as good as it, do, as it does? Well, I'm not very happy with passive crossovers. I think they do too many things to the phase of the signal. Uh, and it's almost impossible to get out of them what I call waveform fidelity. Um, which is, you know, where the waveform that's being reproduced by the loudspeakers is, is a pretty close approximation of the waveform that that is being input to the loudspeakers. Um, too many things going on with active components, coils, capacitors. Um, it, not to say that passive crossovers can't be designed to sound really good. I'm sure they do but I don't have the chops for it. So instead, I punted, and I picked up a little DSP unit that hopefully is not gonna get too shadowed. There's the DSP. That's a Dayton DSP 408. Uh, picked that up for, I believe, $150, and then bought a U-tooth dongle along with it that was another 30 or so. Uh, that's a 4-in-8 out digital signal processor that does duty as uh, parametric EQ. Um, 8 outputs times 10 uh, bands of parametric per um, output. Uh, that's a lot of control. It also gives you uh, signal path time compensation delays, uh, which I am using and I think to very good effect. Uh, and also uh, of course, crossovers uh, with, with any kind of um, crossover slope and type that you might want. Uh, so I am definitely multi-amping this system, for which I need seven amplifiers. Three for each front of house, if you will, plus one for the subwoofer. Now, how do you do that on the cheap? Well, I did it with another Craigslist special. This is a 7.1 channel multimedia uh, receiver and I picked this up also off of Craigslist for along with a couple of other items a Polk subwoofer and a couple of uh, Klipsch bookshelf speakers the whole package fifty dollars somebody was motivated to sell I happen to be the guy in the front of the line and that's what I got it for so there's my seven channel amplifier it does have discrete inputs um, for less than fifty dollars an old laptop running the application for the digital signal processor um, DVD player down there another computer over here streaming HD streaming that's pretty much the system um, and total system cost I'm not counting the cost of the, that armoire um, enclosure because it was basically unused scrap just sitting there. Um, replacement cost would be a fair amount. Um, I'm not counting the cost of the wire, the laptop, the streaming computer, but the but the active big chunk components that you see here, all told, about six hundred dollars. And kind of hard to believe that you could get sound of the quality that I'm getting out of this system for less than several thousand using new components. Um, I will be publishing some demonstration um, clips that will be recorded on this little guy right here, a little zoom portable handheld recorder and uh, we'll see what y'all think that's my story and I'm sticking with it talk to you later